everyone. Today we're going to be talking vectors for the FE Fundamentals of Engineering exam. And the vector topic spans the math section as well as the statics categories through mechanics of materials. So today we're just going to do an overview of vectors in general, see how we can apply that to some simple FE mathematics questions. And then next time we'll look at how to apply this in a really cool way to simplify some more complicated statics problems. So as many of you are, I'm sure, familiar, a vector has both magnitude and direction. So we're going to take a look at what that means with this simple 2D example here. So we have a vector in space. We can call this R. And sometimes you draw this with a bar over it or an arrow. Sometimes we'll draw it with a hat. And it's going from point 1 here at 510 to point 2 here at 1316. So if we expand this out and make this into a triangle, we can see that the length here is going to be 13 minus 5, so this length is 8, and the length here is going to be 16 minus 10, and that's 6. And we did this by doing y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1. Pretty simple geometry there. And then if we want to find this length here, and this will be the magnitude of r, right? The length is the magnitude in this case. We would use Pythagorean's theorem. So if this is a and this is b, we can say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we'll assume that c is our magnitude. So if we do this quickly, a squared is 8 squared, 64. b squared is 6. 36 equals c squared, and we can easily see that c equals 10. Nice easy number. So this is going to be 10 over here. So the magnitude of our vector is going to be 10. Our vector itself, if we wanted to write it out, is going to be 8 in the i direction, which is our x direction vector, plus 6 in our j direction, which is our y direction vector. So now we've solved for the magnitude and we've defined what our vector is. And a cool thing we can do now is we can find the direction. So to find the direction, and we'll usually represent this by something like a lambda, we can take the vector and we can divide it by its own magnitude. So if we have 8i plus 6j divided by 10, we'll end up with a lambda that is 0.8i plus 0.6j. And this is the directional vector. And we'd sometimes call this the unit vector. Why unit vector? Because its magnitude equals 1. If we square 0.8 and 0.6 and add them together, so that would be 0.64 plus 0.36, and we take the square root of that, that will equal 1, so it's magnitude 1, therefore it's a unit vector. So now we have a unit vector, which is telling us the direction that this is pointing. We have our magnitude, which is 10, and then we can combine those two to find our actual vector, which is 8i plus 6j. So now let's follow the same process in three dimensions. So we can see that now our coordinates are in x, y, and z. And this is a little bit more complicated to envision. So our y we're assuming is pointing up, our x is pointing to the right, our z is pointing out of the page. So that's our difference here. But we can follow the same process. If we call this q, let's say, and we want to know what our vector q looks like, well, our vector q itself is going to be 13 minus 5 i plus 16 minus 10 j plus 4 minus 2 k. So we've just subtracted each of the coordinates. So our vector is going to be 8i plus 6j plus 2k. And if we want the magnitude of that vector, well, in the last example with two dimensions, we used Pythagorean's theorem. Here we're applying the same approach, but we're going to do it in three dimensions. So we're going to say 8 squared plus 6 squared plus 2 squared. 
and we're going to take the square root of that. So that's going to be square root of 104. So not quite as nice of a number. And if we want to find our direction vector, we're going to do 8i plus 6j plus 2k all over radical 104. And to compute this, again, they would be pretty ugly numbers, so we're gonna, not going to reason it out, but we would divide each of our vector terms individually by radical 104. So this will be a little bit less than 0.8, this will be a little bit less than 0.6, and this will be a little bit less than 0.2, because this is a little bit greater than 10. So let's look at some examples of how this might show up on the FE exam in the mathematics section. Here they're telling us that we have a vector starting at this position, ending at this position, and we want its magnitude. Pretty simple, we did this calculation. So to define the magnitude, we first need to define the vector. So this will be 3 minus 1i plus 16 minus 5j plus 15 minus 12k. Just subtracting each of those components. So 2i plus 11j plus 3k. And if we want the magnitude of that, we're in three dimensions, we would apply Pythagorean's theorem in three dimensions. So we want the square root of 2 squared plus the square root of 11 squared plus square root of 3 squared. So this is going to be 4 plus 121 plus 9. It's going to be the square root of 134. And this is going to be our magnitude. Now here's another example of something you might encounter in the mathematics section. We can see here we have a vector. Vectors are normally shown as bold on the FE exam. We have a vector f that's got i, j, and k, x, y, and z components, and we want the unit vector. So remember the unit vector is that lambda, and it's found by taking the vector and dividing it by its magnitude. So we have the vector, so now we just need its magnitude. So the magnitude of f we can find using Pythagorean's theorem in three dimensions. So we would do 4 squared plus negative 7 squared plus negative 5 squared and take the square root of that sum. So that's going to be the square root of 16 plus 49 plus 25, which is radical 90. This comes out to be about 9.47. So now our unit vector is going to be 4i minus 7j minus 5k divided by 9.47. And if we divide these terms out, we'll divide each component of the vector by 9.47. We come out with 0.42i minus 0.74j minus 0.53k. And this is our unit vector. If we found the magnitude of it, the magnitude would be 1. You could see this is still in vector form. There's i, j, and k components, which makes sense because this is the direction, and this is the magnitude. So remember, every vector will have a magnitude and a direction that you can find, and there is this nice relationship between the vector, its magnitude, and its direction. And we'll use this in a more practical way when we handle some statics problems that have to do with vectors. Enjoying these videos? Follow the links in the description below to find out how you could reach out for personal tutoring, like and subscribe to get notified when new videos drop, and comment with suggestions for future topics.